It's easy for video shooters to think that they need to buy more expensive gear in order to get better looking video, but oftentimes the key to achieving this is simply to integrate some basic rules of framing and composition into your shots. We're going to break down seven fundamental rules of composition that will help make any video you shoot, whether it's for narrative film, interviews, music videos, or even social media, look as good as possible. If you leave this video with one takeaway, let it be the rule of thirds. If you haven't heard of this concept, imagine a 3x3 grid on top of any image. You should align the key elements in the image according to this grid at the power points where the lines intersect or along with the vertical and horizontal lines. When you put the main focus of your image along this grid, the result tends to be aesthetically pleasing to your viewer. Placing the eyeline of your subject in one of the top two power points will look much better than having them floating in a no man's land between the points on the grid. Many cameras have a grid feature you can enable while shooting, as does just about every external on-camera monitor. Next time you're watching your favorite movie or TV show, keep this grid in mind and see where the DP chooses to place the subject in the frame. Another great tool to make your video look more cinematic is leading lines. Leading lines are the tangible or intangible lines in the frame created by things like roads, buildings, signs, arrows, or light in the background that lead the viewer's eye in a particular direction. If you're using these effectively, your audience might not even be aware of them, but they're a very subtle yet powerful way to direct the focus of your viewer. Going hand in hand with the rule of thirds is the concept of balance. A super simple way to think of this is to imagine a seesaw in the middle of your frame. A subject position frame left with nothing on the right feels imbalanced to the eye. The same is true for a subject in the foreground with nothing in the back. This can be mitigated by making sure something visually interesting or relevant to the story you're telling is complementing the opposite side that your subject is placed in. Or you can intentionally leave this image unbalanced if you want the audience to feel a little uneasy or off kilter. Think of balance as simply a way to make sure that the image in your frame stays organized. Related to balance is symmetry, otherwise known as every single Wes Anderson film. Symmetry is when you have both sides of your frame matching each other in some way, and it breaks the rule of thirds in order to provide a specific type of effect on the viewer. It's a great way to shoot interviews and documentaries, and it's an effective way to use the background to add some nice framing to your shot. In a narrative context, it can make a character appear to be more of an authority figure, or it can simply be used as a stylistic choice to heighten the reality of a scene. Depth of field is another important tool in composition, and it simply refers to what is actively in focus within your frame and what is out of focus. This is predominantly controlled by your camera's aperture, and by opening it wide, you can decrease your depth of field so that your subject is in focus and the background looks blurry. This blurriness, or bokeh, like you're seeing here, can help make your image look more cinematic and gives you additional options to direct your viewer's attention in ways that other framing methods can't. While it's important to make sure you're drawing your audience's attention where you want to be focused, it's just as important to make sure that you're also avoiding any potentially distracting elements. It's easy to get tunnel vision with your subject and not notice things like ugly objects in the foreground or background, or objects seemingly sprouting out of your subject's head. Make sure to always step back and take a look at the entire frame of your image after you have your composition where you want it, and confirm that nothing that could be distracting has also crept into the frame. This last one is a bit more specific, but frame within a frame is when you use elements within your environment to help frame up your subject. This may not always be easy or practical to do, but it can have a really cool effect if you can pull it off. Try shooting your subject through a window or through the crack of a door or any other opening that you can find in your environment. This adds additional framing and can help further emphasize your subject. And those are seven framing and composition tips to help with your next shoot. Finding ways to utilize them, combine them, or even completely disregard them for a specific effect can help make the image you have on screen convey exactly what you intend it to. Are there any other framing tricks you utilize that we forgot to mention? Let us know in the comments below. I'm Nick with B&H. Stay creative.